alcohol. She turns up in so many places, especially the fun stuff. She's at weddings, birthdays, dinner parties. If there's a celebration going on, she's pretty much always invited. And she's often there for us at the end of a really hard day. She's a treat, she's a relief, but she's a false friend. Most of us know that alcohol can be harmful to our liver. And we usually think about this happening when someone drinks excessive amounts or is addicted to alcohol. But the effects of alcohol on both our body and brain are far broader and sneakier than we realize. And they happen even when we're not drinking all that much. So let's take a look at all the ways alcohol starts to stab us in the back when we get to perimenopause and menopause. It's hard to find a symptom of menopause that alcohol doesn't make worse. And as if that's not cruel enough, with many of these symptoms, she fools us into thinking she's actually helping with them. Because in the short term, alcohol can make us feel more relaxed. She can take away that horrible feeling of anxiety that so many women start to experience around this time. She can also help us fall off to sleep more easily. But there is a sting in her tail because ultimately alcohol messes up our sleep-wake cycle and she also worsens our anxiety. Back in med school, I remember seeing a diagram of all the ways alcohol can harm the human body and there were arrows pointing at pretty much every organ and structure we all need of. Not just the liver, but the pancreas, the heart, the bones, the brain, Alcohol causes damage in places most people don't expect it to and at levels of drinking that aren't even all that high. And as far back as 1903, people started to wonder if alcohol caused cancer too. Now we know for sure that it does, with at least seven different types of cancer being linked to alcohol and one of them is breast cancer. Thank you.